Good day everyone, it's David here. So I got myself a little project going and the project, the project brief, the project um, target is first of all the customer requirement. Who's the customer? Well, anybody basically. I want to improve my 4G. That's a typical phone conversation we have. Um, pick up the phone, say I have a problem with my 4G. There we go. So that's the customer requirement. Um, what's my customer requirement? So now I'm just a little bit devil's advocate also playing customer here. Um, I want to illustrate the antenna fundamentals. but we need to keep it simple. So there's kind of the customer is the user, the customer is me, and then the other one is really, if I want to achieve something, I need to keep it simple. If, ever, if I'm going to bamboozle everybody with, this is how clever this stuff is, forget it, lost case. Um, so keep your KPI, um, key performance indicators, just throwing in some fancy words here, <laughs> because I can. <laughs> if you get improved 4G, yeah, it, you, you've proven your point. And then of course the question is going to be, did you learn something about RF? Did I keep it simple? I don't know. That's, um, that's going to be a tough one to, to do. Now, the design principles, um, and I want to say this just in general, um, there's a, this is a capacitive fed patch antenna. That photo here is of something that I made 20 years ago as a student in the University of Pretoria in South Africa. Um, and that's just a picture showing the um, concept that I did there in my um, actual documentation. So. Is this not something new? This is not something ultra um, sensitive or ultra um, confidential or so. This is just an antenna that exists, that, that gets used a lot. And I modified it so that it does something for me in 4G. All I did is just apply the, the knowledge that I know what frequency is available here in um, where I live in Trot Park. Um, physically, that's my frequency. I'm going to build an antenna that does that frequency that, that would get you connected in metro area. So any metropolitan base station might have this connection. No guarantees, but it's very likely that it's going to be this one. And this, the frequency band here is um, the 1700. So the antenna is supposed to work 1700 to 2700. So those, those bands, um, that's, that's the ones that this would work for. So what do you do? Now, there we go. That's, that's first of all, we use a tool called CST Design Studio or um, the CST Studio Suite 2021 is the, the version that I used here. Now, this is obviously a very basic output of what the capabilities of those um, those tools, um, but I used that tool to create an antenna and I create some design parameters and I create the actual shapes and stuff that I want to do so that I can see what's happening. On the picture there, um, basically that's the what we call the radiation patterns. You can see it basically sends the signal forward. So here I have, it's actually, it, um, I've done the whole thing. Um, so one thing I have to note that in real life we do still some modification. Nothing is always perfect the first time because I might not have um, done everything exactly the way I simulated my construction was exactly the same. So in real life as an engineer, there is a step two. So first we get an antenna, it's working. Then we use something magic, magical called copper tape and <laughs> just do some modifications. I mean, I, I could have done that first before I showed you this and that would have been absolutely perfect. But I think the beauty of, of being open and honest about these things is, you know what, there's actually a step in between. So you simulate, you do the first build, you learn, you do the second build, Pops your auntie. It's all good. Unless there's another cycle, but that that's 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 kind of irrelevant anyway. Um, okay, so I have a radiation pattern. So the antenna radiates out of here. Cool. And I see what I call their return loss. Return loss is the fact that in these bands, that like band three is the one I was targeting here. Band three, if you look at those lists that you have from LTE, in band three, my modem would send energy down this pipe, down this coaxial cable, the antenna would say, yep, I can take this, I send it out. That would say return loss is low because there's no loss, it's actually going and it's getting, getting sent forward. In other bands, other areas, say band 28 is a big name that people call these days, the um, router would send the signal in here, this thing is not doing its job, and that signal, because it's like a flowing, um, it's like flowing energy, would just bounce back. So literally, the return loss is very high because zoop, it goes in and it goes back again, it goes out. That's what those plots tell you. And then you look at the bottom, there's frequency. Frequency is the frequency band, so the actual number. And then we just um, kind of use that to see what's happening. Is this the frequency area that I want my antenna to work in? So this is the beauty of CST, the, the, the tool that we use. Um, you can actually, once you've done a simulation, you can create 
little videos. Um, it's already done, so the data is there. It just goes through the actual wave because there's always waves coming through this thing. That's the whole principle of a resonant frequency. So there's a sinus wave of that specific frequency coming through. And as you go through the phase, so it goes up in the, in, um, up in the phase, goes down from 0 to 90 to 180 to 270 and then back to 360 which is back and that cycle cycle move keeps happening and you can visualize that to see what's happening on my actual um, antenna but because it's a radiator it's not an antenna that just um, sits there and it, it does stuff on the surface it actually you want to have antenna power coming out you can just do another cut and this is another cut that i did through it so if you have an antenna there just take a slice through it basically like this and you can see it actually produces a wave and it's starting to just what we call propagate just poof, it goes out so that's what the antenna does so you can see it's going forward and that's the effect that is this is nothing to do with 4g yet this is just that specific frequency things are happening this thing is alive and then you make it visual this is a bit of um like artistic flair but that's just me so uh, now you can see i overlay a photo of this actual unit itself on top of my my image at the book so you can see this thing if it was like that specific representation there. Okay, so the, um, the idea that we have is to get this antenna and present it in a kit form. Now, a kit is really this. It's a screws, a connector. You need to solder that. Two foot pieces, the spacers, and the actual antenna itself. So you can see the Black Art Technologies 4G starter kit and the ground plane. You would put this all together and learn how that all works. That's the kit. So imagine that, put it all together, and you get an awesome um, connection and an awesome result. Now, if you look at the refinement of the actual final products, um, the likes of Pointing, um, Bolton Technical, uh, Panorama, all the other companies out there, Tauglas, um, there's much more to it. And that's because that's when you get from a building block which is what I showed you from 20 years ago. That's the fundamental building block. You need to make this a MIMO antenna. You make it environmentally um, sustainable that it can actually survive the um, rain and storm. You need to put it in the enclosure which has complications on this. It's quite easy for me to say, well, you know what? There's a little band for 4G. That's what we're going to use on. Now, what about adding 5G? What about adding the, um, the lower bands as well? What about something that does the whole band? That's a whole different thing. And that's where actual engineering comes into play. This is fundamentals. This is the kind of stuff you would learn in university. But I feel this is important for everybody to, to appreciate so that they could get either to us or to anybody and say, okay, you know what? This antenna is going to do something for me. So let's get, at, let's get going on this. I have connected these two, it was last week Saturday, to a actual Teltonica 240. The same one I always use. It's literally the same model um, using Optus SIM cards. So so what I've done, I've basically connected these two antennas to my Teltonica after I did a test with the Teltonica by itself. So the Teltonica is on the table, um, has the two antennas connected to it. I do basic tests to see, well, there you go, this is it, my modem's on the same place. Then, because I knew my base station is in that direction, the one that I'm connected to, put the two antennas on the same table, and then I replaced the um, Teltonica Omni antennas with these two antennas to see what's the difference, what's the effect that you get from a fundamentally designed antenna. Now, there's the results on the screen. Um, so what I want to say first, as I say, the antennas from the Teltonica is awesome and the results that I get are good as far as signal strength is concerned. Um, so you could see there on the left before Omni antenna. So I um, had those values in there. Signal strength, I just put it in there because people keep looking at that number. I don't really look at the signal strength number that you get on those readings because that's not um, specifically relating to the um, 4G connection itself. That's relating to the, um, well, I think to, to 3G more than anything. Um, I specifically look at the um, RSRP, RSRQ and the signal to noise ratio. Those are the three numbers that are most important to me, but still it always goes, the one follows the other one, so I, I, I just highlight those numbers as well. So on the left, before, which is the Omni antennas, after with the bat antennas. Um, I, I just keep going to say, the red is not red because it's bad, it's red, it's red because it's before. Um, so what you could see there, if you look at the um, look at the signal strength, the um, S uh, minus 59 dBm, it goes to minus 51, so 8 dB improvement. 
that's an 8 dB antenna, so a 7 dB antenna gain. So the numbers make sense. Um, the, the kind of order of magnitude difference is, is making sense. Um, I do highlight the um, cell ID and I did highlight at the bottom connected band to see they are exactly the same. So I'm not jumping to a different band and that is actually something that often gets people confused. They get measurements with RSRP, which is receive signal power or relative, I'll get the acronym on the screen now. Um, you get it for a specific band. And when people connect an external antenna, the modem says, I'm good enough to jump to another frequency band. But then the whole physics changes. So the number then would, might be the same or even looking slightly worse. But the modem itself jumped to another frequency band. It says, now I'm on band 3. I used to be on band 28. All that kind of complexities happen, and that's fine. But it does confuse um, the, the reading, what muddies the water when you look at readings like this one. That's why I highlight the fact that this is identical A to B. Before and after is 100% identical. The modem didn't change band, the modem didn't change to a different base station. I didn't um, just first lock onto a base station that's further away and then say to look at bad assistant and then go to the next one. I'm going straight. This one before and after. All right, so now the um, RSRP, 7 dB improved. RSRQ, 5 dB improved. Uh, yes, it is. And signal to noise is 2.9, which was uh, average up to 11.1, which makes me happy. There we go. I mean, it's kind of what more can I say? That's awesome. That's that's fundamentally where I get really excited. Um, I do jump to the um, the next screen then. So in terms of the throughput and the speed, that was actually there was a a big footy match on, and I think a lot of people were online. So I'm not going to try to say everything is just smashing and it's all so everything is perfect because another problem that we do face at RF shop is continuously people would say I have 20 megabits I need to get 30 megabits how can I do this with the antenna and can I guarantee the antenna is going to get me better throughput I can't guarantee anything I can guarantee the previous screen which is an improved stable connection and then when things go funny you would be connected and when there's a lot of um, um, rain or something you'll be connected, it will be more stable, it will be clean, it would be reliable, that kind of stuff. The speed will follow, the speed is likely to be better, and it might be, if you're lucky, it might be phenomenally better as well. So that is likely to happen, but it's no guarantee, and the numbers, there's no way I can guarantee that, because it's also, it changes from day to day. Like these speeds are nothing to, to be excited about, 13.7 on a, on, a, on a Saturday afternoon, but we see that every Saturday, it just happens on the local base stations. Um, if I were to do the same test on an um, early morning when nobody's awake yet, I would easily get 100 megabits here at home. Um, but it's all about the relative improvement. Now, there's a 50% improvement, um, which, that's awesome, that's awesome. So between this and the um, signal strength, I am actually totally stoked. Um, what you can do next, what you can do differently is, of course, you can put this thing or you can elevate it. That's another thing that you do with a proper antenna, not these, um, these little um, kits, is you can put them outside which is a big plus, we were outside, so we were comparing apples with apples in terms of being outside the whole time. You can put them higher, so higher would be better, because right now I would be facing buildings, I would be facing obstructions. Um, I mean, you can see behind me that my neighbors are here, so it looks the same that way as well, there's stuff. Um, so if you can elevate the antennas, it's a big, big benefit, um, which you can't do on these little um, demo kits, um, but it's, it's all about um, demonstrating the concept. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, do subscribe and let us know and, and watch out for the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.